Peace and love. Good day. Good evening. Good afternoon. Uh, good vibes to whenever this message and podcast finds you. Today we're going to be reading the Dred Scott case. Uh, Dred Scott versus Sanford, 60 U.S., 393, 1856. Um, I'm going to be reading the Just the Opinion. You can check it out at Supreme. <coughs> dot justia.com. Um, you know, it's a pop up for a quick Google search. Let's carry it over in one second. Just the Opinion Summary Annotations. Annotation. Primary holding in a decision that later was nullified by the 13th and 14th Amendments, the Supreme Court held that former slaves did not have standing in federal courts because they lacked U.S. citizenship, even after they were freed. Facts. Dred Scott, a slave born in Virginia, was purchased by John Emerson in Missouri in 1820. Emerson then traveled with Scott to Fort Armstrong, Illinois, and from there to Fort Snelling, Wisconsin. Both Illinois and Wisconsin prohibited slavery. Scott and his wife stayed in Wisconsin when Emerson returned to Missouri. Since Emerson leased their services to other white people in Wisconsin, he violated Missouri Compromise, as well as other laws against slavery in the region. When Emerson moved to Louisiana, Scott and his wife joined him. The daughter was born in a steamboat on the Mississippi River, which technically made her a free person because she was born in free territory. Emerson soon returned to Wisconsin, but his wife took Scott and his wife back to Missouri when Scott served in the Seminole War. Emerson ultimately died in Iowa, and his widow inherited Scott, whose services she continued to lease to others. Emerson's widow rejected an attempt by Scott to buy his family's freedom, which led to legal action. Scott argued that his wife and he were legally emancipated because of the residences in free territories. Missouri courts had ruled in favor of similarly positioned slaves but his case was initially dismissed on a minor procedural ground. Eventually, the jury did rule in his favor, but Emerson's widow appealed. She had moved to Massachusetts by then and given Scott to her brother, John F.A. Sanford. Upon appeal, the Missouri Supreme Court reversed earlier decisions in the area and ruled that Scott was not required to be emancipated because he had failed to sue for his freedom when he was living in a free state. When Sanford moved to New York, Scott resumed his legal action there in federal court since diversity jurisdiction applied. Opinions, majority, Roger Brooke Taney, James M., excuse me, James Moore Wayne, John Catron, Peter Vivian Daniel, Samuel Nelson, Robert Cooper Greer, John Archibald, John Archibald Campbell. Taney argued that the court did not have jurisdiction to hear the case by Scott. Diversity jurisdiction is limited to cases involving citizens of different states. And Taney suggested that Scott was not a citizen of any state because he had he was a descent of a slave. <clears throat> I gotta reread it because my book. Man, what I got this one for me. Taney argued that the court did not have jurisdiction to hear a case brought by Scott. Diversity jurisdiction is limited to cases involving citizens of different states. Taney suggested that Scott was not a citizen of any state because he was a descendant of a slave. In fact, the opinion suggested that it was not, in fact, the opinion suggested that not even a freed slave could bring an action in federal court in the diversity jurisdiction because of his or her African descent. Taney concluded that the drafters of the Constitution saw African Americans as an inferior and would not have intended to extend this right to them. He suggested they extended constitutional protections to African Americans, which would be necessary if they were deemed to be citizens, would result in the socially unacceptable consequences of giving them the right to travel, free speech, and the right to bear arms. Since Taney had found that jurisdiction was lacking, he could dismiss the case on procedural grounds. However, he continued to address a substantive issue, perhaps in response to pressure from President James Buchanan, who wanted a conclusive resolution to disputes over slavery. He reached the conclusion that the Missouri Compromise and its designation of certain states as free states could not be enforced because the territory that it encompassed was not within Northwestern territories to which the federal government's power to create state governments is limited. Taney also ruled that slaves were property under the Fifth Amendment, and any law that would deprive a slave owner of that property was unconstitutional. The opinion showed deference to the government and courts of Missouri. 
excuse me. The opinion showed deference to the government courts in Missouri, which it held that moving to a free state did not make Scott emancipated. Tanny accepted this view without much examination since he felt the federal courts lacked jurisdiction in the first place. Concurrence, Samuel Nelson, author Robert Cooper Greer. Nelson essentially reached the same conclusion as Tanny, but he based his view solely on the merits of the case because he felt the jurisdiction was proper. Dissent, Benjamin Robbins Curtis. Dissent, Benjamin Robbins Curtis, author. Criticizing Tanny's decision for addressing substance once it had found lack of jurisdiction, Curtis pointed out that invalidating the Missouri Compromise was not necessary to resolving the case. He also questioned Tanny's belief that the founders were steadfast opposed to anti-slavery laws. Dissent, John McLean, author. McLean echoed Curtis in finding that the majority had improperly reviewed the substance of the claim when it should have been limited to the procedure. He also argued that men of African descent could be citizens since they already had the right to vote in five states. Concurrence, James Moore Wayne, author. Concurrence, John Catron, author. Concurrence, Peter Vivian Daniel, author. Concurrence, Robert Cooper Greer, author. Concurrence, John Arachnifold Campbell, author. Case commentary, the decision ranks amongst the most infamous in history of the U.S. Supreme Court, but it was important to remember that it simply rationalized the prevailing social system in a large part of the United States at the time. Tanny's florid rhetoric seems an attempt to conceal the flimsy logic of his argument, which was discarded within a few decades and no longer carries any weight. Fortunate for Scott. Fortunate for Scott, one of the sons of his master purchased his freedom shortly after his decision. He worked in a hotel in St. Louis until his death later in 1850. He worked in a hotel in St. Louis until his death later in the 1850s. His widow survived until the 1870s, witnessing the defeat of Tanny's vision by the 13th and 14th Amendments. Okay. <clears throat> U.S. Syllabus 1. Upon a writ error to a circuit court judge of the United States, the transcript of the record of all proceedings in this case is brought before the court and is open for inspection and revision. When a plea to jurisdiction and abatement is overruled by the court demur, and the defendant pleads in bar, and upon he pleads the final judgment of court is in his favor. If the plaintiff brings a writ of error, the judgment for the court upon plea and abatement is before the court, although it was in favor of the plaintiff. And if the court erred in overruling it, the judgment must be reversed and a mandate issued to the circuit court to dismiss the case for want of jurisdiction. Three, in the circuit courts of the United States, the record must show that the case is one in which, by the Constitution and laws of the United States, the court had jurisdiction. And if this does not appear, then the judgment must be reversed by the court. And the parties cannot be consent, waive the objection to jurisdiction of the court. Four, a free Negro of the African race whose ancestors were brought to this country and sold as slaves is not a citizen within the meaning of the Constitution of the United States. Five, when the Constitution was adopted, they were not regarded in any states as members of the community which constituted the state and were not numbered among its people, quote unquote, people or quote unquote citizens. Consequently, the special rights and immunities guaranteed to citizens do not apply to them. And not being citizens within the meaning of the Constitution, they are not entitled to sue in that character in a court of the United States. And the circuit court has no jurisdiction in such a suit. Six. Only two clauses in the Constitution which point to the race treat them as persons with whom it was morally lawful to deal in the articles of his property and to hold slaves. Six, the only two clauses in the Constitution which point to the race treat them as persons with whom it was morally lawful to deal in his articles of property and to hold a slave. Seven, since the adoption of the Constitution in the United States, no state can by any subsequent law make a foreigner or any other description of persons, citizens of. 